Hi, welcome to today's video. Today we're wrapping up what I read in June. As has been happening lately, I did not follow my TBR whatsoever. I also did ignore the rule that I had of no rereads. So let's just get straight into the first book that I read this month. If you saw my previous wrap up, you may know that I'm doing a Shadow and Bone reread. So the first book I finished was Seed and Storm by Leigh Bardugo. The first time I read this book, I kind of didn't like it, but this time, I really enjoyed it. I think that because I've read some of the other Grishaverse books at this point, I have more of an appreciation for this series. This book in particular, we're introduced to Stormhund and Nikolai, and it's just so much fun. Since the first time I read this book, I had forgotten most of what happened. It was so enjoyable this time. I'm finding it hard to remember, like, specific things that happen in this book. I don't know why, this series in particular just really becomes one thing to me. I find it hard to separate out each book, especially the last two. So to talk about this series, I am going to include the next book that I read, which is Ruin and Rising. Again, I enjoyed this so much more the second time around, and I think that the show changed my opinion on it. Reading these books after watching the Shadow and Bone TV show made them feel so much richer. Most of these books was left out of the show. Most of the things that happen didn't happen in the show. And I do understand why. I think a lot of books have, you know, the journey and that doesn't translate well on screen. It's a lot of just like going from one place to another and on screen that can be a little bit boring maybe, but I loved these books. One thing that I'm really upset was left out of the show is like basically everything about the apparat. One thing that was really interesting was seeing the character of, what is his name? The character of Vladim, I think his name was, seeing that like Alina marked him and just the entire kind of cult around the Sun Saint was so interesting to me. I love the ending of this book. That's something that I feel like is like a touchy subject. I'm gonna spoil the ending, so if you don't wanna hear it, uh, don't, don't listen, basically. Um, I like that Alina lost her powers. She never wanted to be a saint. She never wanted that world. And so I feel like the ending works. She didn't have to be this singular hero. I like that her powers kind of dispersed and were shared amongst different people. I like that she gets to have her quiet life. And I think because of the way the show ended, there have been so many conversations. Um, and like people have very strong opinions on both sides. I like what the show has done. I like that it's left the door open for a future season. Um, the idea of like a dark Alina storyline is super interesting to me, especially because like the books show that that could happen before the ending. Obviously, once the ending happens, it can't. But while she has her powers, she's definitely like pulled towards the dark. So I think it's really interesting. I think it's also a really interesting way to show kind of the cost of Merzost. Um, but yeah, I enjoy the ending of the book. There's that one scene I think it's just like in the epilogue, but it's of her at the window kind of holding a beam of light that's coming through in her hand as if she's controlling it. And that's so like heartbreaking, but beautiful. There are so many side characters in this series that just hold such a special place in my heart. One in particular, or two I guess, is Harshaw and Oncat. I saw a piece of fan art actually that just like, oh, was so beautiful. Um, I just, I loved these books. The other books that I read this month were King of Scars and Rule of Wolves. I'm so glad I finally got to this series and having just reread Shadow and Bone and jumping into these was such an incredible experience. Um, so I'm going to continue to talk about those while talking about these. Obviously there are a lot of characters that are from the Shadow and Bone series, and I I love these books. I've definitely heard that some people don't like these books, but I personally do. 
Um, so I didn't really know anything about these books. I had seen a few quotes, so I knew about one of the romances that happens, but I just knew them as the Nikolai books. So again, I'm going to be talking about spoilers. If you don't want to hear it, please do not continue watching. But I had heard that Nikolai had some kind of demon problem, and I had heard something about Zoya being like Queen of Dragons, no idea what that meant until I read it. Um, but seeing that opening to this book, following this random kid, I think Leigh Bardugo starts books in a really interesting way. Um, similarly in Six of Crows where you start with Juiced. You start with this random kid who has to go out and close like a barn door and then you see that he's about to be eaten by some kind of demon. <laughs> And then Zoya walks in with like chains and you find out that the demon is Nikolai and Zoya is like <laughs> a zookeeper trying to rein him in. I think that was such a wonderful start to the book. I think it gives you so much context and a development to these characters because it has been a while since Shadow and Bone, but Nikolai and Zoya are such wonderful characters. Can you tell I'm in a very Zoya mood? I've been wearing this blue ribbon for days at this point. I <laughs> I'm feeling I'm feeling the Zoya Lai love right now. <laughs> Seeing Zoya and Nikolai interacting in this book and the fact that it's very clear to the audience that they are into each other, but they just like kind of can't do anything about it. He is a king. She is a general? Is she a general? I just, <laughs> I loved it so much. There was so much tension and the other characters were also so wonderful. Sticking with that side of the story, because obviously there is another side to the story that we'll get to in a moment, um, but Jenya and David were so wonderful <laughs> in this book. I loved them so much. Jenya is one of those characters that is just so incredible to me. Um, I've always had a very soft spot in my heart for David. I, I adore him and we'll talk about him more when we start talking about Rule of Wolves because, ow. <laughs> I thought that the entire plot with the apparat and, what did they call it? The, the, it's, they don't call it a cult, do they? But it is a cult. I thought the whole Starless One thing was so interesting. And I, I feel like it's almost reflective of our world. I don't want to like, overdo it too much and like maybe read too far into it but the idea that there was this person who very clearly was bad was doing bad things was exploiting people and hurting people then being turned into a martyr and having like a cult following and being like a saint to these people having all of their wrongdoings forgiven after death. It just, it's one of those things where like I can't think about it too deeply or else I just get wildly upset. But oh this book was so good. The other lot of characters in this book hold a very special place in my heart following mostly Nina or Mila in this book. Nina Zenik is one of my favorite characters. She's wonderful and in this book she is on a mission in Fjorda because of course she is. Seeing that she is still carrying around, uh, spoilers for Six of Crows, by the way, yikes, didn't finish that sentence, but yes, don't watch if you haven't read Crooked Kingdom. <laughs> um, but seeing Nina carrying Matthias's body around and waiting for the right time to let him go was so painful to watch. I think that Adric and Lyony, I think her name is, were excellent characters and the tension of waiting for them to be together was wild. <laughs> the fact that Nina had been hearing Matthias's voice in her head and believed it was her transformed powers, but then having that moment of realization that he was never there, that it was all in her head, um, and then finally hearing the actual voices calling out to her was just so beautiful in such a painful way. We're holding up the next one now. Um, <laughs> I read these books very quickly close together so I am a little confused on where one ended and the next one started but continuing to talk about characters the plotline um when Zoya and Nikolai haven't returned for the wedding was so painful to watch um seeing that boy being trained to act as Nikolai 
and seeing him grow to care about, you know, this potential bride of Nikolai's, knowing he could never actually be with her, and then, oh my god, that, <laughs> that scene when he, when they meet in secret and she kills him and then tries to kill herself. That was brutal to read. This poor kid. And then to see that Zoya and Nikolai get there, like at that moment. But yeah, it was all so painful. One thing I thought was really cool was the way the TV show kind of alluded to parts of this story. Um, in the show, when they're burning the Darkling's body, seeing a bee land on Zoya, that is something that like now looking at it makes me like want to scream knowing what was happening in that scene incredible the fact that they brought the darkling back what like crazy the fact that zoya can now turn into a dragon also crazy that's something i kind of had spoiled but i didn't understand the context so i didn't really know what I was hearing um, but yeah I'm jumping around all over but the fact that you know all these people from different countries were called together for a wedding and they arrived and it wasn't this royal wedding it was Jenya and David's wedding and then everything goes wrong and David dies right after his kind of re-wedding that death was one of the more painful ones I've read lately. And I know it's not just me because I was just explaining it like conceptually to my mom and she started crying. Like it is so tragic that even someone who has no emotional involvement just bawled their eyes out. And that's how I know it's good. <laughs> I can't believe I haven't talked about this character yet. Oh my God, this is one of my favorite characters from the whole book. Um, one thing I was really glad about was that I never felt like I was missing either kind of point of view. I loved spending time with Nina and I loved spending time with Nikolai and Zoya. But right now I want to talk about Nina's storyline because oh my god. Can this girl please stop falling in love with people who see Jarl Brom as a father figure? Please, Nina. Nina, stop falling in love with Jarl Brom's children challenge. <laughs> Hard edition. <laughs> um, finding out more about Hana was wonderful. I love Hana as a character. And I kind of saw where the ending of that character was going. Not the very ending. Oh my god, that came out of nowhere to me. But from the first book, these seeds are planted that Hana feels more comfortable when presenting as a man. And like, I just, uh, I love how instantly supportive Nina was. She didn't get it at the start. She didn't, I don't think she was picking up what Hana was putting down, but once Hana was kind of open about that and took the place of the prince, um, like it all worked. I do love how kind of full circle it feels that Nina is gonna be queen of Yerda in the future. Like that's where the story is going. From the start of Six of Crows, she is this girl who has a fascination with this country and its customs and everything about it. And she ends the story essentially the queen of the country. There's something beautiful about that. I just love it. Um, I mean, it goes without saying, Jarl Brom, I don't even know if I'm saying his name right, but Jarl Brom sucks a lot. <laughs> he just is a bad person. Um, the fact that Nina was just like living in his house for so long, wild, truly wild. One part of this book, or maybe it was the first one, maybe it was King of Scars, that just made me like <sighs> feel a lot was Trussell, I think is how it's pronounced. Uh, <laughs> it's so sad to even think about. Matthias's wolf finds Nina, finds her just after she buries Matthias and then saves her from wolves. That's when she meets Hana, so it's in King of Scars. But my God, it is so heartbreaking. Everything about these books, it's just so good and so sad and so good. <laughs> but yes, I have talked in circles about these books now. Everything I said was kind of out of order, so I'm sorry for that, but yes. 
Um, I usually rate books in my wrap-ups. I think all of these got a 4 out of 5 stars. I think. I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> Again, talking in circles. I love Nikolai. I love Soya. I love Mila. <laughs> I love Hana. I love that bit at the end when they're talking about Hana's name and whether he's going to change it. Because, I mean, he kind of has to because he's taken the role of someone. Okay, never mind. I'm not over it. Wait, there's something else I need to talk about. Oh my god. Let's talk about Joran. I might not even be, maybe it's Yorin also, and I, it might not even be him, but the character I'm talking about is uh, like the prince's f friend or guard um, who was given that position for uh, doing something bad, and that was killing a Driscella. Matthias. Nina is casually talking to the kid who killed Matthias and then finds out the page where she finds out oh my god it hurts so bad but the fact that matthias did actually plant the seed of doubt in this kid's mind and like it was so heartbreaking but like the story couldn't have happened if it wasn't him and the fact that nina kept remembering in her mind matthias telling her to like spare his people and to like help them, that the Driscella aren't bad people, they were raised in it, that's what they believe, it's all they've ever known, and they just need to be shown the right way. The fact that she kept thinking about that, and oh my god, <laughs> this book, man. Um, but yeah, Hana is now the prince. I also loved seeing Nina talking to the queen. And being like, oh, you got help when you were pregnant from a Grisha. How about that? <laughs> um, but yeah, they were talking about the, the point I got to from ages ago that we are now turning back to. Um, Hana's name. He doesn't want to keep the prince's name because the prince sucked. Um, and they were talking about taking like a saint's name. Um, I feel like they mention... Elia at some point. I've definitely seen people referring to him as Elia, but yeah, I just, I love that whole, I love the Nina and Hana line, plot line. Like, I can't speak to whether it's good trans rep, but it is trans representation in a fantasy story, which is something that I haven't seen very often. There is a character from uh, the Shadowhunter Chronicles that comes to mind, but I can't think of many others, not in these like big, very popular series at least. But yes, I told myself I'd stop talking ages ago, so now I'm gonna stop talking for realsies. <sighs> so yes, I read four books this month, they were all from the Grishaverse. I loved them all very much. If you haven't read Lee Bardugo's books, you probably shouldn't have watched to the end because spoilers, but if you haven't, I really recommend picking them up. I will say the Six of Crows duology is still my favourite, um, followed by the Nikolai duology. But yes, I love them all so much. If you liked this video, you can give it a thumbs up. Have you read the Grishaverse? What series is your favourite? What book is your favourite? Do you have a favourite character and why is it Zoya? <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna go. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.